Okay, so today's webinar is all about an introduction to apprenticeships. So we know that if you perhaps haven't had an apprentice before, or if you're considering perhaps taking an apprentice in another part of your business, you may not be familiar with where to start or quite what the latest guidance is around apprenticeships. There is so much about apprenticeships in the press and in the media these days that it's sometimes difficult to know just where to begin. So today we're going to try and cover everything to ensure that you've got all of the information that you need to get started and to help you to get on your way with employing an apprentice if that's what's right for your business. So before we start, I'd just like to familiarise you with the controls. So we, if you're listening in through a computer, hopefully you can hear my voice coming out through your microphones. If at any time you have trouble with the audio, then phoning in using the telephone number is also an option. There's a free phone number that you can dial, which should be appearing in the right-hand corner of your screen. You may need to click on audio to be able to see it. Also, a couple of functions for you. So we've already practiced the raise hand button. If anyone wants to get my attention at any point during the webinar, then please click on the little yellow hand and that will tell me that you want to ask a question. At that point, we've got two options. I can either unmute you so it turns into a bit of a radio broadcast or I, I can um, get you to type the question over to me. So in the questions box, you'll be able to type in anything that you want as we go. Um, what I will do is probably take all of the questions at the end just so that we can um, do it all at once because I'm sure people will have similar questions. We're also going to try a few polls um, as we go through just to get a gauge from you about how much you know about apprenticeships and how interested you might be in getting started. So question number one, we're really interested to know where you're listening in from today and this also gets you using the questions box. So if you could just type in for me the town or the city that you're listening in from, then we will be able to see the range of geographical coverage that we've got. So you just need to type in your town and then click return and that will come through. Wow, so I can see we've got Wellingborough, Northamptonshire, Milton Keynes, Bedford, Gretton, Wellingborough, <laughs> all sorts, all over the South East Midlands, which is fantastic. So I can also see that a couple of people have put their hands up. So um, what we'll do is, if you don't mind, take those questions at the end. If you want to type your questions into that questions pane for me, that would be really useful. Thank you. OK, so first poll, we would really like to know how much you know about apprenticeships. So on your screens appearing now, should be the poll and you can click on whichever answer you feel is most appropriate. So how much do you know about apprenticeships? Quite a lot, a fair amount, not very much or nothing. And I can see those votes coming in now, which is brilliant. OK, and now I can show you the results from that poll, which should be appearing on your screen now. So that you can see, there's a 41% response saying a fair amount, 41% saying not very much, and 18% saying nothing. So hopefully, as we go through today, your confidence and your knowledge around apprenticeships will increase. OK, so over the next 30 minutes, this is what we're going to cover. We want you to feel really confident about apprenticeships. So we're going to cover what an apprenticeship is and the range of job roles, the business benefits, the cost and commitment to your business, simple steps to get started and how to find out more. So first and foremost, what is an apprenticeship? Well, lots of people, I think, get really hung up on the word apprenticeship. Apprenticeships are basically working and learning at the same time. Apprenticeships are available to anyone aged 16 plus. There is no upper age limit. So one of the myths out there is that you have to be 16 to 18 or 16 to 24. Actually, as long as you have completed compulsory education, so year 11 at school, then you would be eligible potentially to undertake an apprenticeship. It's a real job with a real employer and apprenticeships can be for new staff that are coming into your organisation or they could be for existing members of staff. And when I get onto the levels a bit later on, it may start you thinking about managers or 
potential managers of the future that you might be thinking, actually, I wonder if an apprenticeship or apprenticeship training could be suitable for them. An apprentice must be paid a salary. They will have a contract of employment, including holiday pay and sick pay. And an apprentice will gain qualifications and workplace skills with support from a training provider. So it's very much a triangle arrangement, an apprenticeship. There will be yourself as the employer, there will be the apprentice, and there will be a training provider. Now that could be a local college, it could be a private training provider, it could be a university. Depending on which apprenticeship and which set of qualifications go with that apprenticeship, that will decide or help you to decide which training provider to work with. But again, we're going to cover that later on in the webinar, how you would go about selecting a training provider. And apprenticeships really are about progression opportunities. So the idea with apprenticeships is that it enables an individual to gain new skills and qualifications to help them to progress in their career. Hopefully an apprentice will be able to take on more responsibility and bring you a greater return on investment into your business. The range of occupations is mind-blowing, I think, and often when we talk about apprenticeships, people assume that it's some of those more traditional areas, things like um, carpentry or construction or hairdressing and things like that, which of course are fantastic apprenticeships and we still have thousands of apprentices across England in all of those areas. But the range of apprenticeships, I think, is really changing. The government are investing hugely in apprenticeships at the moment. So I think really, no matter how niche it is that your business and niche an area that your business is working in, or perhaps how new the technology is, there could be an apprenticeship that could be right for you. For example, there is a new degree apprenticeship in digital and technology solutions where an individual could major on cybersecurity something that's been in the press a lot this morning, I know, um, but also something that I know a lot of businesses are aware of. Um, you could get into legal services, management, accountancy, finance, HR. So really, we would encourage you to think about all of those areas of your business and think, well, where, where do you need that skills investment and where do you need those job roles to be able to support you to grow as an organisation? This is where we've seen the biggest change, the levels of apprenticeships that are available. So I'm just going to talk you through it. Intermediate apprenticeship is classed as level two, which some would say is equivalent to GCSEs. I actually don't think it's very fair to apply an academic type grade of GCSEs or A-levels to apprenticeships because apprenticeships are actually about having those skills and the behaviours and competencies to be able to do a job. But, you know, we've got the levels, so let me go with them. So intermediate apprenticeship at level two, this would really be an introductory role into your organisation. It would normally take someone about 12 to 18 months to complete an intermediate apprenticeship. Then we've got advanced apprenticeships, which are equivalent to level three, so equivalent to A-levels. These can take anywhere between one year to four years, so 48 months potentially to complete. Again, it really depends on the individual, the job role that they're doing, the apprenticeships that they're following, of course. But advanced apprenticeships are normally the progression from intermediate into advanced, although you do find some individuals may leave school and go straight into an advanced apprenticeship, or perhaps a member of staff who has undertaken a certain element of team leading or supervisory skills, that kind of thing. That could be an advanced apprenticeship as well. Then, higher and degree apprenticeships, and this is where we've seen the biggest developments recently. So, higher and degree apprenticeships cover everything from levels four, five, six, and seven. So, level four would be equivalent to a foundation degree or the first year of the degree. Um, and then, level five would be the second year. Level six is equivalent to a full degree, a full bachelor's or honours degree. And level seven is equivalent to master's degree. So this really means that an individual in your organisation, potentially through apprenticeships, could have that entire journey from level two through to level seven at master's level. Now, some um, qualifications at level five and level six, some apprenticeships do not contain a full degree, so they just get called higher apprenticeships. But what you will notice increasingly is lots of universities are now offering degree apprenticeships at level six and level seven 
and that enables them to achieve a full degree or a full master's degree as part of the apprenticeship. So this is where you might start to think, well, I wonder actually if there's an existing member of staff who may be appropriate to undertake an apprenticeship at degree level or master's level even to really develop those skills in your business, but also recognize their experience in gaining a qualification that will support that. Now, one of the big rule changes that we've got coming um, is that anyone who has already got a degree will be able to undertake an apprenticeship as long as the content is significantly different to the original qualification that they studied and we can evidence that they are gaining substantive new skills. Now, your training provider will be able to help you work through that and what would and wouldn't be eligible. But it's, again, I think quite interesting from a business point of view to think, well, who have I got in my team who might be suitable for this kind of on-the-job training with support from a training provider? So let's go on to the next poll. Are you surprised at the range of apprenticeships that are available? And we'll just give you a couple of seconds to click your responses there. Okay, fantastic. So uh, let me share the results so you can see. Massively, 88% are surprised at the range. And I think, you know, before you get into apprenticeships, this is one of the biggest areas of research. There literally are new apprenticeships coming out every day. And um, we'll tell you about the websites where you can go to to get the best information on all of this. But there's so much change going on. So let's move on to look at the commitment that you will be making as a business. So um, in terms of your commitment as an employer, obviously you will be employing the apprentice on that contract of employment, as we mentioned on the first slide. You will be paying them the salary, but also probably one of the biggest areas that we need to explain to you is around your time and the commitment to the apprentice. So some apprentices will require time away from the workplace to undertake learning, depending on which training provider and which delivery model you go with. But also your time, and it may not be your time if you're the chief exec or the director, but it could be recognising that the time of your team in terms of developing that apprentice is, is quite significant. And on-the-job training is a huge part of apprenticeships. This is why they work so well because the apprentice will be developing the skills and the behaviours and the competencies that you need for your business. So absolutely, the training provider will support that, and they will be doing the wraparound learning and development, and they will work with you to select the most appropriate units and modules and parts of qualifications that are the best fit for your business. But definitely a large part of it, as with any member of staff, is developing them, making sure that they really understand the ethos of your company, and can develop their skills and learn from others, which is a really valuable trait for apprenticeships. The other cost to you as the employer at the moment is um, if your learner is aged 16 to 18, they will be fully funded by the government. If they are aged 19 plus, then there could be an employer contribution. And again, it will be down to you to talk to your training provider, the training provider that you select, about what that employer contribution would be, but it's, it is a cash payment. From May 2017, unless you are employing a 16 to 18 year old and your business has less than 50 employees, there will be a cash contribution that will be required. Now, the government have been consulting on this recently. We haven't got the final guidance yet, but just to make you aware that come May 2017, there could be some changes around apprenticeships and the way that they are funded. However, for 16 to 18 year olds or 19 to 24, if they have learning difficulties or disabilities or what's called an education, health and care plan, then the government are proposing that those learners would be 100% funded. So again, we can update you closer to the time and let you know what's happening with that policy. All apprentices are employed, so one of your first tasks is going to be to decide on the job role. And you're going to need to think about key tasks and responsibilities, 
Um, and absolutely, kind of as you would if you were introducing any new job role into your business. We would really urge you not to be restricted by thinking that an apprenticeship needs to be about low level tasks. If that's right for your business, if you're looking to bring someone in to learn grassroots up, then absolutely fine. But you may actually be thinking, do you know what? I, what I really need for my business is someone who could come in with this skill set and who could really take forward this area of the business. And that's not impossible. So you don't have to bring someone in who's going to start as an intermediate apprentice. You could actually advertise a job role and bring them in and put them onto a higher or degree apprenticeship if that's what's going to be right for your organization. You're also going to need to think about um, how many hours per week you want your apprentice to work. So the expectation is a minimum of 30 hours per week. And, of course, what you're going to pay them. So with apprenticeships, there are national minimum wages that are set around apprenticeships. And depending on the age of the apprentice and how long they have been an apprentice. So I've put the link in there for you to gov.uk so that you can look at the national minimum wage rates. We would really encourage employers not to go for the very rock bottom and national minimum wage that you can pay apprentices if possible. We would really encourage you to look at the job role and look at what you feel that job role is, is worth. That's going to do two things. Um, if you're advertising for a new apprentice, then it will mean that um, they, they, you may attract more, but also you may attract a better calibre. So you can go on to the Find an Apprenticeship website, which we've got on the next slide, and you will be able to get a feel for the different um, levels of apprenticeships and the kind of salaries that employers are offering. Now, the good news is there are wage incentives that you may be eligible for. At the moment, we've got something called the Age Grant, the Apprenticeship Grant for Employers. And again, I've put the link on there for you for the fact sheet. Um, with the age grant, if you're eligible, then you could um, be entitled to get up to £1,500 towards the cost of employing your apprentice. Again, this is going to change slightly from May. So if you were to take on a 16 or 18 year old or a 19 to 24 year old with learning difficulties or an education, health and care plan um, or a care leaver, then you will be entitled to £1,000. But there could be other local incentives that you could be entitled to as well. So sometimes local authorities or local enterprise partnerships will introduce their own additional apprenticeship grants. So it's really worth doing the research, speak to your training provider because they are going to be best placed to be able to tell you about the different wage incentives that you could be entitled to. So moving on to selecting a training provider, um, it can be quite overwhelming because literally there are thousands of training providers out there. So a few options for you. You may already know a local training provider that you want to work with, and that's absolutely fine. You may have dealt with them in the past, have experience. You can stay with that training provider. However, if you would like to find a new training provider, currently there is this website findatrainingorganisation.nas.apprenticeships.org.uk. Don't worry about writing it down. We'll send you the slides so that you've got all of this. Um, you can go onto that website and you can search for a training provider. Or you can email us at SEMLEP and we will gladly put you in touch with an appropriate training provider from within our network in the South East Midlands area. In the future, going forward, from May, there will be something called the Digital Apprenticeship Service. And this will be a web-based platform where you will be able to go on as an employer and search for a training provider through that new portal. But until that portal is up and running, this website down at the bottom is a great place to start. But also, speak to us at SEMLEP and we'll be glad to put you in touch with a local training provider to help you. Then what happens once with your training provider, if you've decided that you're going to recruit a new apprentice, they will support you to advertise the vacancy. So as well as advertising the vacancy on your website, to your friends and family, to anyone that you can think of really who might be interested, we would really encourage you to spread the word. There is also this national apprenticeship 
website where you can advertise and we do loads of work with schools to try and ensure that lots of young people and teachers and parents are registered on this website and are, are aware of the vacancies that come up. So your training provider will help you to put your advert onto this website any time throughout the year and you will need to decide how long you want to advertise for. Some employers have a really long recruitment window. So some employers will be thinking about advertising now for an apprentice that they want to find for next September. Other employers will decide to advertise as and when the business need arises. So you'll need to also think about um, where you're going to advertise. So in addition to find an apprenticeship, which does also talk to Universal Job Match, which is the Job Centre Plus database. So you won't have to do both. Where else might you want to advertise? So there's your own website. Do you have a news bulletin that goes out? Um, do you have a shop window even that you could put something in the window? Kind of really think broadly about where you could advertise and utilising your networks. We often find that actually it will be staff who know someone who's looking for an apprenticeship or a contact of that organisation who might um, be able to put someone forward or signpost them to you. Local secondary schools, of course, really depends on what you're looking for and the kind of vacancy that you've got. When you use the free Find an Apprenticeship website, there is a standard template for the application form that we use, and it will ask you for key details, or it will ask the individual on the application form for key details, such as their education history, work experience, strength and personal skills, if they need any support, and hobbies and interests. Plus, there are two questions that you can personalise. So, we would really encourage you as an employer to think about the questions that you add to the application form if you are going to use this system. So, for example, if you run a restaurant, you could ask something like, um, we source our ingredients locally. What's the best local ingredient you've tasted recently? Try and find a question that will really engage the individual completing the application form and get them get their enthusiasm to come across. Some of the questions that don't really get the best responses are where do you see yourself in five years time? Um, we're based in Northampton. How would you get to us each day? Tell us your travel plans. You know, that kind of stuff. That, of course, are, are interesting and useful, but perhaps better saved for interview because at the application process, you're really looking for that enthusiasm um, and determination and genuine interest to come through from the young person. I think your training provider can support you with all of this. Then it gets to the interview selection and feedback process. So it's really down to you as an employer how involved you get in the shortlisting process. So some employers will want to see all of the applications that are submitted. Other employers might say to their training provider, look, just pick me the best 10 and let's set up interviews for those best 10. Then it's down to you as the employer to interview the individual and make your selection. And if you decide that someone in that pool of 10, for example, is brilliant and going to be perfect for you, fantastic, you would make them an offer as you would any other member of staff. And if actually you think, well, I'm not sure that any of those 10 are quite right for me. Can I go to a second round of interviews or could we re-advertise? Absolutely. So this is down to you as the employer. Please do not ever feel that you're, you're kind of caught up in, in some kind of process that you can't say actually. It's really important that you find the right member of staff for your organisation and your training provider is absolutely there to help you. One thing that we do really encourage is feedback. Particularly if you are um, interviewing an individual who perhaps hasn't got very much experience or haven't undertaken an interview before. There's some really useful forms, and again, the link is on the website there, but if someone who has perhaps been out of work for a while or hasn't really gone for a job before, interviews really well, but they just weren't quite right for your company, or did, did okay, but there were a couple of areas in the interview that really made you cringe or think, oh goodness, you shouldn't be saying that, then it's really important that we find a way to give that feedback to the individuals because then we can help them to develop and hopefully the next time they'll go for an interview with someone else, they'll be successful. So please, if your training provider asks you for some feedback on the individuals, please take the time to help us because it just really helps those job seekers in our local area. 
So one extra thing that you have to add to your contract of employment is called the apprenticeship agreement. And the apprenticeship agreement is basically a one page um, document that you have to add in to the contract, which really flags up to the individual that they are on an apprenticeship. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but it's something that the government have introduced, something you need to be aware of. But nothing, it shouldn't cause you any extra work. So again, the link to the template is there and it's just about completing it, personalizing it for your company and, um, and then filling it in, and adding it to their contract once you've appointed them, of course. So just a couple of other bits to tell you about. Um, traineeships. Now, traineeships were introduced about three years ago. And they are designed to be of benefit to employers who might not quite be sure yet about taking on an apprentice. So if you're sat there thinking, well, it all sounds good, but I'm just not sure if this would work for us, a traineeship could be a really good way for you to cut your teeth for bringing in a young person into your business. So with a traineeship, you will be linked to a training provider again, and they will help you to set up a long work experience placement with someone aged 16 to 24 who wants to get a job. And that individual will be with you or on the traineeship for between six weeks and six months. We ask that as an employer, you provide a high quality placement for them. So if you think work experience, but think work experience, not just the mundane tasks, because you can actually have that individual with you for quite a decent amount of time, you could really get them working for you to show their strengths and their abilities. So you could set them a project, you could um, ask them to investigate a certain area of your business, you could ask them to conduct consumer research, you could even rotate them around different departments within your business, depending on the size of your company, to see where a trainee, where a 16 to 24 year old might fit best. Now this individual could be a potential apprentice. If you get them in and you like them and they're a great fit for your organization, then you could offer them an apprenticeship and you don't actually then have to advertise externally. You would be able to convert that into an apprenticeship. We also ask that you give them a guaranteed interview. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean an interview for a job or a position with you, but we like employers to put our trainees through the interview process. So that again, remember, these are young people, 16 to 24, who are trying to find a job and we're trying to build their experience and their confidence. So it's a really good experience for them to have an interview with you and be put through their paces because it prepares them for the next time. One more thing to tell you about is apprenticeship training agencies or ATAs for short. So you may have heard of the phrase ATA. An ATA is a bit like a recruitment company in that they employ the apprentice on behalf of your business. Then they place them with you as the host. So you would commit to a certain period of time and a certain salary, and then you'd be charged a management fee on top of that. So for example, if you wanted to have an apprentice, um, but you didn't want any of the, the kind of payroll costs or contracts, then their official employment is actually with the ATA, the Apprenticeship Training Agency, and they'll be hosted with you. Say you then wanted to pay them £300 a week. So it would be £300 plus probably a 15% management fee on top of that. And the ATA would take on the responsibility for employing them. And you would effectively be renting them or getting them as a temporary member of staff into your organisation. Now, the best apprenticeship training agency arrangements work where the employer actually commits to seeing the apprentice through the entire duration of their apprenticeship. It does work really well for some companies who are just not sure about making that leap to taking on an apprentice completely. The apprenticeship training agency can help you with a kind of interim arrangement. Again, if you want any information on this, then please let us know and we'll gladly put you in touch with some of our local ATAs. So another poll for you. This is the last one, I promise. We would like to just share with you this one. So do you think that you might be interested in creating an apprenticeship for your business? And we'd be really keen to know when you might be thinking about that. So yes, immediately. Yes, but maybe in the next six months. Yes, but after May 2017. Maybe and no. So if you could just complete those. Don't worry, we're not going to hold you to this. This is just out of interest, really. We're, we're really keen to see um, what employers are feeling at the moment. 
So I can see that 57% of people have voted. So a few more votes to come in, please. Lovely, okay, let's share these results. So 50% of the people listening in are saying yes in the next six months, 19% yes, but probably after May, 25% maybe, 6% now, I think that's one, one organisation. So I think that's pretty successful. Okay, and uh, just two more things to tell you about. The apprenticeship levy, which we haven't covered today, is coming in in May. This is another one of the big changes that the government are bringing in. The apprenticeship levy will only affect businesses who have a payroll bill, an annual payroll bill of three million pounds. So it doesn't affect a lot of small businesses and it won't affect a lot of our smaller businesses in the area. But some large organisations are going to be levied employers from May. We're running another webinar next Tuesday from 12 till 1. So if you are a levied employer and you want to know about the apprenticeship levy, please feel free to join us on that webinar. Some of the policy is still being developed and worked up by the government, but we'll tell you everything that we know, at least by next Tuesday. And then an event that you might be interested in, um, SEMLET, together with the Open University, are hosting an event on the 1st of December called Apprenticeships in New World. And we're really keen to include workshops and um, kind of discussion points throughout the day that are going to be of interest to you as an employer. So if you've got any thoughts about additional information that you would find useful, please type it into the questions box for us and let us know if there's um, anything that you want us to cover, because we'll take that back to SEMLAP and we'll make sure that we include that during the day for you. Okay, and a few more places to find out more information. So we have the National Apprenticeship Service, and I've put the website on there for you, and there's also a hotline. So if you just fancy phoning someone completely independent, then that will take you through to the National Apprenticeship Service call and hotline. They will then be able to help you with any questions that you've got. We also have an organization called Apprentice Makers that you may have come across. Now, Apprentice Makers have a brilliant online platform where, as a local employer, you can post a question and then other local employers can come back and help you answer it. So it's really employers helping employers, which is very useful. And additionally, we also have local apprenticeship ambassadors. So these are employers who employ apprentices across the South East Midlands who have put themselves forward and said, I would be happy to talk to another employer. So if you want us to put you in touch with another local business who has taken the step of taking on an apprentice, whether a new recruit into their organisation or converting an existing member of staff into an apprenticeship to be able to access that brilliant support and training, then let us know because we can put you in touch with our ambassadors who would be more than happy to have a chat with you on the phone or perhaps come out and see you and share their experience as well of taking on an apprentice. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar. The SEMLEP website, semlep.com forward slash apprenticeships, has an apprenticeship portal, and we use that portal to make sure that we can keep you up to date with the latest apprenticeship news. But now I'm going to start recording the webinar.